back in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, which can only mean one thing. It's the beginning of the holiday season. I make it an annual tradition to come out to Stockbridge and stay at the Red Lion Inn every year. But not before coming to the Norman Rockwell Museum and taking a gaze at this landscape. Right here behind me is Norman Rockwell's studio. They moved it from town all the way out here, perched it on this hill. When I look at this landscape, I say to myself, it's time to start celebrating Christmas. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it's at this time that I'm gonna welcome you to join me on my visit. Will you join? You will? Then let's do this. You know, you can almost sense a warmth from the building. See, if I step this way, it's cold, but as I get closer, it gets warmer. The fireplaces, the, I was gonna say candle lights, they don't burn candles, but you know what I'm saying. There's this feeling that happens in your heart, your spirit, your soul, whatever you wanna call it. It's good to be back. Just good to warm the bones by the fire. My hands are icy cold. I've missed this place. I've really missed it a lot. All right, let's check in. All right, so I checked in, got my key. And there's a little bit of a surprise. They were able to give me my favorite room in the entire inn. Why is it my favorite room? Well, I'll have to show you, but there's many reasons. It's on the second floor. It takes a little bit of time. You know, it's an old inn. It's only one floor we're going up. The Hitchcock room. That's what we're in right now kind of a lounge sitting area. Chairs, lamps, books, warm lighting to set the tone of the stay. It's not far, I swear, it's right down here. Listen to the floors, can you hear that? The creaking of the old floorboards in the inn. I love this. Adds to the ambiance. Here we are. This is the moment, the, the grand reveal. Are you ready? dark. Uh, let's start with this light. Why is this my favorite room, you ask? Well, I'm glad you proposed that question. We have these two windows right here that look out into Main Street. Uh, you can't really tell right now, but during the day, it's right in the heart of Main Street. You see people walking their dogs, you see the tourists, you see the locals, the chapel's right there. In the winter, the snow is falling down. All you gotta do is just pull up that chair over here, tilt it by the window. 
have a cup of coffee, have a cup of tea, have a hot cup of hot cocoa if you want. Soak it all in. We are on the southernmost room of the inn. Like this is the end right here. We have the two windows, but we also have a southern window right here. Three windows. So we have Main Street, we got a residential area back here of Stockbridge, beautiful. You get to see the silhouettes of the buildings in the morning as the sun rises. And in the bathroom, it's the same thing. There's two more windows. Also, when you're staying at a heartwarming inn, it's great to have a fireplace, right? Uh, now, that is not a functioning fireplace back there. And that's good because I don't want to burn down the Red Line Inn. But above the fireplace, we have a mantle. A mantle is not something that I've ever had in my life. And I know that might seem like a silly luxury, but I think it's quite a treat. And I'm going to be making use of this mantle in a little bit. You'll see, you'll see. But above the mantle, we have one of my favorite Norman Rockwell paintings. It's from uh, the cover of a Post magazine. Pictured is this little girl. She's got a magazine in her lap. She's looking at this picture of an actress, a model, someone who looks kind of like Rita Hayworth. She's looking at herself in the mirror and, and, and thinking to herself, why, why don't I look like this beautiful woman? It's heartbreaking. It really is. It's, it's heartbreaking. It's endearing at the same time. There's that little tipped over doll. Just broken dreams. Broken dreams. If you take a look at the bottom, you'll see the man himself, his own John Hancock, signed with graphite, Norman Rockwell's signature. How cool is that? It's not every day you stay in a room with a legitimate print, probably sold at his studio at some point, but also signed by him. I have tons of luggage and I need to get it into this room because I don't want to leave it in my car. The sun has set, it's dark, so let's get this luggage and uh, yeah. I mean, you can come or you can stay. That's gonna be up to you. I, th I think you should come. I think I'm nuts for bringing all of this with me to the inn. I'm truly trying to get into the holiday spirit here. Months ago, I found these vintage villages of Stockbridge. All of these boxes are filled with all of the buildings that are on Main Street that are featured in the painting Christmas on Main Street. These were produced in 1989. Uh, I bought this from some seller on eBay. I haven't even opened them up yet, but this is the entire collection. And since I said that we were gonna be using the mantle, I wasn't kidding, I'm gonna break all of these out and lay them in the correct order to recreate Christmas on Main Street on our mantle. 
Let's hope these are not broken. I truly haven't opened these up yet, um, but let's, let's get to this. We are having some dinner together. Haven't been in this dining room in quite some time. Charcuterie and local cheese board. Grain mustard house pickles. I know that the pickles here are amazing. People don't give Pickles enough credit. Ciabatta house-made chips. Chips are crunchy. Lion's Ale beer battered haddock. Oh man. In a very familiar spot as well. I've seen uh, a fair share of inebriation so far today. I don't know really how to comment on what we just saw. Lemon pepper tuna melt, marble rye, lemon aioli. Do you know the difference between aioli and mayonnaise? Do you, or do you, or are you just saying that you do? What do you want? Does any of that strike your fancy? <coughs> that water is good. Must be purified. The wall that I'm looking at in front of me, it bolts the bar. Loaded, stocked with booze. I'm just thinking, like, man. It's so quiet around here. Imagine you got like snowed in at the Red Lion Inn. I could see some some bad things happening at that bar, you know? Some tank array gets unruly. Hendrix, she's a beast. What else do I see? Malibu, oh boy. Gin, gin, gin's my, my thing. The G and T's, gin and tonics. Oh yeah, we sneak up on you, you know? Feels like you're drinking club soda or tonic water. And all of a sudden, you know, you're like chucking limes at people across the bar. Chicken sliders? Yes. Here we go. Thank you very much. And there's some ketchup, salt, and pepper for them. Perfect. Thank you so much. Need anything else? We're all set. Enjoy. Thank you.
beautiful and I love it when it's this quiet. There's something about the silence of the Red Lion Inn that adds to the experience. And in, in this room, the intimacy. I mean, just look at this. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that Red Lion Inn. How do you want to say it? The, 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 the Red Lion feels, you know what I mean? I could just sit here all night, walking around. I'm liking this. Just listen. Quiet. It is quite late. We got white linen. We have this little lamp that adds this warm light. I feel like it's very cinematic. I feel like this table should be a scene between Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, you know, serve up some, some Italian dishes, add some bad language, and uh, you got yourself a scene. You got yourself a sequence, a good one, maybe even an Oscar. As much as I would love to go on a nice long moonlit stroll, it is blustery, it is cold, and more than that, it's so windy. My face is already locking up and I didn't bring any gloves, and this is the heaviest jacket I have. I did not, I did not plan. I did not bring uh, clothing that would be appropriate for this kind of weather. I'm always underestimating how cold it's going to be in Stockbridge. And look at this. Look at this. I remember this from last time. The, the pool, if you can believe this, remains open all year round. How that's not a big block of ice, I, I there's no, I, I cannot explain. Now the hot tub, I get, because yeah, you know, warm yourself up. Who, who is gonna go swimming? I mean, even if it was mildly brisk, this is insane kind of weather. I don't get it. <sighs> Smell of that chimney smoke. I love it, folks. I love it. I'll tell you what I love even more, though. Being inside where it's warm. It's time to make a hot beverage. It's been a while that, since I've had a hot beverage and I think I have a good idea. It's time to make some hot cocoa. I just bought this Red Lion ceramic mug, camping mug, and uh, yeah. So it's time to make a hot beverage. How about some hot cocoa? I think that sounds just about right. Put yourself, put myself, put all of us in the Christmas state of mind, Christmas spirit. It's time to make some hot cocoa because, well, that's just gonna put me in the spirit for Christmas, wouldn't you? Wouldn't, wouldn't it make you put you in the spirit for Christmas? Okay, so I have this Red Lion Inn mug, ceramic. It's pretty cold, so I'm gonna have to heat it up. Uh, but I got some water boiling in, uh, in a water kettle. So 
that'll help. Also, in here, I thought ahead. I bought some hot cocoa, hot cocoa mix. This is by McStevens. It's called the Winter Wonderland Blend. It's creamy, chocolate, hot cocoa. It's manufactured with uh, products that share equipment with wheat, soy, tree nuts, and peanuts. If you have any allergies, it's a good time to speak up. So it says nothing about milk. It says nothing about cream or anything like that. I'm guessing that's because it has non-fat dry milk uh, powder in the mix. My recommendation is to certainly add milk, cream, half and half, whatever, whatever suits your needs. But I have something else that I'm going to try today. And I've been keeping it outside the window to keep it cold. That's right. I bought some Yoohoo. Yoohoo. This is a, a chocolate drink. It says that. It's not chocolate milk, but it's made using skim milk. So we get chocolate milk, but lower, lower uh, milk fat. But I've always liked the, the taste of Yoohoo. Ah, that's childhood right there. But it's cold. So how am I gonna fix that problem? I got the solution all set. Right down here, I have this water kettle and it's, it's boiling, it's hot. And I'm just gonna take the Yoohoo and I'm just gonna put it right, oh, all right, I filled it too much. Oh, too much. It's all good. You know, these things happen, the hot water. This way we'll get uh, that Yoohoo nice and warm. Ooh. I'm gonna go with three tablespoons. Now I don't have any marshmallows. I was gonna pick some up, but I couldn't find any. That's really all I have to say about that. Our Yoohoo is nice and hot. It took the label right off. That is hot Yoohoo. The red line in mug. It's very important to pour it this high. It's not just about aesthetics. Oh yeah. This is gonna be rich. It may not have as much milk fat in it, but it's gonna be loaded with calories. That's how you know it's rich. It's viscous. I'm all ready to drink that. I'm just gonna change into something a little bit more comfortable. Jealous Santa? I'd be. Oh. Whoever created hot cocoa or uh, made it synonymous with Christmas, well, they knew what they were doing. I should have brought some candy canes.
don't care. cold. So I've done a lot of stupid things in my life and I know if I show that this pool was open and I didn't go in, not only am I not going to be able to sleep tonight, I'm going to lose sleep for weeks. So do you dare me to go in? Do you triple dog dare me to go in? Tally ho! It's going to be a good day, but first things first, coffee.
All right, so I travel a lot, which made me put together my own coffee traveling bag. So this way, I don't have to wake up in the morning and hunt for an exceptional cup of coffee. I can do it on my own. We're gonna load this puppy up with 30 grams of coffee, no more, no less. In order to do that, I brought my scale. And we're gonna be drinking some Winter Blooms by Blue Bottle Coffee. Notes of milk chocolate, black cherry, and nutmeg. Gotta have a steady hand for this. Top goes on, the lever goes on there snugly. And this will give you, this will give you a forearm a workout. It doesn't take a short amount of time. It actually takes quite a while. I think that's it. Now this, I should have been doing this while I was grinding the coffee. This might look like just a white thing. It's not. It's an electric kettle that folds so I can fit it in my bag. It's actually not a great product at all. I've burned myself several times while using it. Get this rip roaring. Hario B60 size two, pour over, and we're gonna dump our coffee in. There is a coffee place right just down the street. In fact, I could take a shortcut right through that fence. But this way is far more satisfying. With the hot water, this is how I burned myself before. Uh, the lid opened, ah. Every gram of coffee, we're gonna double the weight in water. Counterclockwise spiral, starting from the outside. I'll be honest, I really don't know why. Um, it's just, that's kind of the standard way to make pour over. We're going to add the rest of our water. And when all of that water seeps to the bottom, the timer should say three minutes exactly. That is, that is always the mission. One serious hot cup of Joe made at the Red Line Inn. to do is wiggle your toes. I can feel the heat on my leather boots uh, and just scrunching them up the toes. It's warming them up so quick. So one of the storefronts that is featured in Norman Rockwell's Christmas on Main Street is Williams and Sons. It's a general store that's been here in Stockbridge forever. Inside they have soaps, candles, coffee, tea, kitchenware, childhood candy, so much nostalgia, so much goodness. But instead of standing out here, how about we go inside and check it out for ourselves? I think, I think that would be a fine idea. So not only is this nostalgic candy some of my favorite, but I am seeing some of my parents' favorite candies of all time. The two of them right next to each other. So blackjack is my mother's favorite gum. If I, if I remember correctly, it's like a black licorice stick gum. And then we have a Chowards Violet Gum, which is, it's like lavender forward. It has uh, a hint of perhaps something like patchouli. Probably not, but that's what it always reminded me of. 
And the fact that they're right next to each other makes that a little extra special. Clove, you know, Clove and I, we have a love-hate relationship, but, you know, I don't think I would particularly enjoy Clove gum, but you never know until you try. Cowtails, you know how I feel about cowtails. And chocolates, chocolates for days. I remember last time I came in and I tried the cherries and almonds and I picked up hazelnut and milk chocolate. Soaps, lotions, balms and butters, everything that we need for body care to live a luxurious lifestyle. But something that jumped out at me right away, Asia Luna. Asia Luna out of New York State is a small batch soap company. They make everything from beard oils, lip balms, spa candles. I even shampoo my dog with Asia Luna shampoo. They make it for dogs and they certainly make candles as well. You know, the library was always an important place to me, uh, especially when I was a child. Storytelling is an essential part of not only my upbringing, but of my daily life. The holidays are certainly no exception to that, maybe even more so. So what other excuse do we need than to visit the Stockbridge Library here on Main Street. What exactly you're doing? I, I saw you got some glue in the Abbey Road album. 
Yeah, well, one thing we like to do here at Seven Arts is uh, present a nice product. And oftentimes, over the years, the glue dries up that holds the sleeves together. So when you take your records out, it's all over the place. Okay. And, I see that again. And what we'll do is we will simply just re-glue the cover back together. Because we, uh, we care about the product, you know? Presentation is half the battle, you know? And this is a great album. And it's in really good condition. And somebody's going to be thrilled to find this. Because look, look at the condition of this record. That is a really nice copy of Abbey Road. It is about as nice as you can possibly get. So we want to make sure the cover is as nice as we can make it too. And of other interest, just for the fun of it, we got a Cheryl Ladd album. I don't know where you're going to find another copy of Cheryl Ladd. What is, in your opinion, not the best, but your favorite Christmas album? Well, I do like the Bing Crosby one. We do have a great CD I can show you of a fabulous Christmas record, if you're interested. Yeah, absolutely. Ella Fitzgerald wishes you a swinging Christmas. Ella Fitzgerald wishing you a swinging Christmas. It was here yesterday, and I think somebody bought it. So I knew this moment in the video would come when I would have to share the very sad news of Yankee Candle here on Main Street in Stockbridge, one of the first satellite stores for Yankee Candle, uh, has, has been closed and is now for sale. This was really upsetting news to me when I found out uh, a while ago. And I knew that coming here and seeing the empty windows, it's uh, not about losing Yankee Candle. It's about losing a piece of the history of the company. To be able to receive a candle and know that a person put some thought and effort into what kind of aroma represents you or me and what would be special and what are the, the, the stories that we have to share that are locked, embedded inside this jar, this wax, this candle. So buy Yankee Candle on Stockbridge. Thank you for all the special memories, not just in the shops, but the candles that I bought inside. All of the candles helped me relive little bits and pieces of my past and for that, I'm, I'll forever be grateful. There's only one thing left that I feel like I can do to pay my respect to uh, a special part of Main Street. I am inside the general store uh, here on Main Street, looking out on Main Street. Where we're sitting is directly below Norman Rockwell's studio. In the 50s, Norman Rockwell's studio was just above our heads. It's the building on Main Street that has the big window. And in the painting, there's the big Christmas tree right in that window. Now, Norman Rockwell installed that window himself. At the time, it cost him $5,000 to have that window installed. It's one piece. It's one piece of glass. But he wanted that so that he could look down on Main Street from a bird's eye view and observe people's behavior. Uh, because this is what he did. If only, if only, for just a minute, if I could ever get up there one day, just to gaze outside that window, to look down at Main Street, just like Norman did all those many years ago, man, that would be something. 
that, that would be something worth calling home about. But for now, I'm gonna sit here and look at my own window. Well, it's not my window, but the window that is near my table and drink my cup of coffee. So no small deal for me, folks. I'm in a very special location, a location that, you know, many folks don't get to experience. And I have to say, my heart is beating a little extra fast in this moment. And I wanna share this with you, if you don't mind. We are on top of the general store in front of Norman Rockwell's window. Yes, this, the floor in which I'm standing was Norman Rockwell's studio in the 50s. This is where all of the magic happened, all of, so many of the paintings that have enhanced our lives throughout the years created in this space. And Norman, Norman, had this window specifically installed so he could look down on his street, look down on Stockbridge, and gaze down at the folks from a bird's eye view. And just standing here in its presence, it's so large. It's so much larger than I even anticipated. Now, just to be clear, this is the window that has the enormous Christmas tree uh, featured in Christmas on Main Street, the panoramic painting. And when every year, when they recreate the painting on Main Street, it's the first Saturday of December every year. They've been doing this for over 50 years. The tree gets installed right here in this spot. So much significance, so much history where I'm standing. I can feel a little bit of Norman's artistic inspiration flowing through my fingers, through my bones. And if I may, for just a moment, pose just like the very famous photograph of Norman standing by his window in silhouette looking down on Main Street, putting together in his mind what would be the next subject put on canvas. There it is, folks. There it is. Well, it never gets old, folks. It never gets old. I had a fantastic time here at the Red Lion, and I want to thank you for joining me on my little trip journey, experience, adventure, call it what you will. If there's anything better than being able to visit Stockbridge and the Red Line, it's the ability to share my experience with you folks. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. All experiences must come to an end, and this one is ending on a good note. So I hope everyone has a happy holiday season. I will be seeing you soon. But until then, be good, will ya?